Welcome back to the TSL 3 for the fifth and final match of the day. Spawning in the bottom left, OGSMC. We've seen him on a 2 0 run. Can he close it out against the monster in the top right? Pray Thor's in. Can he? I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like, well, MC did bring it to 2 2, but I really and truly feel like Thorzine's play has been just slightly better. And if that continues onwards, I mean, this map, we don't see a lot of variation. In fact, all the TVPs I ever see here is like a marine tank timing <laughs> that gets broken by Colossus. But I feel like Thorzane, he's not going to fall into that trap. He's, he's going to bring his A game play. This guy obviously has nerves of steel. And uh, can he take out MC? I, I, I believe, Chill. And I feel like in the games we've seen, Thorzane has gotten the benefit of having smaller maps. Uh, hitting that 2 2 timing and then really pressing the issue. And look at this, scouting with his SCV. Oh my god, I'm just, I'm in love. My man crush. But as I was saying, <laughs> uh, to complete the thought, uh, when he gets that 2-2 two -two and he can really press the issue, he's had an advantage, whereas MC tends to want to get his tech out faster, take control of the match, and then start adding in upgrades, and once he gets that, he starts taking control of the match. So, uh, on a shorter match, or excuse me, on a shorter map like we're on here, you've got to imagine that's a little bit of uh, an advantage in Thorzane's corner. Yeah, and you know, he's actually, one thing I do really want to point out is that this guy will not hesitate to get two starports to have enough Vikings to kill off your units, and this is the Colossus map. This is like, I'm sorry, you don't go Templars here. Uh, you go Colossus here. The Colossus is so important uh, to actually abuse these hills, uh, poke up on these high grounds, uh, abuse the small chambers where your mm -hmm. gateway army can be kited for days and months and years. So I feel like Thorzane, with his his aptitude to go to to Starport uh, Viking, is going to be in good shape going into this match. You can see a little bit of a different build here out of Thorzane, getting the second uh, Marine. I don't know if he's worried about any sort of early aggression, but he's now gotten that SCV into the main base of uh, MC. He's going to see that there's a Cybernetics Core on the way and a Zealot in production before uh, Thorzane adds anything on, and this is why he did that, because he's going back to his factory build. He may take it back to that Banshee play we saw on Zelnega Caverns. Yeah, and why not? But MC did take his second gas before starting his Zella, and that can be a little bit telling. That that oftentimes means, hey, I'm, I might make more sentries or tech up crazily, because that's, that's going to give you a ton of gas and obviously a much slower stalker that gives you more time to uh, build up your gas to actually make your tech building. So I think Thorzane's going to see that and be like, all right, I, I kind of get what's going on. But a tech lab going up on that barracks, that tells mm. me that uh, I think we're going to see Siege Tank Marine. Again, as you, you called, you see uh, a lot of these builds, on the, or a lot of this build on this map. We can see the factory exactly as predicted, swapping out with that tech lab. Got to imagine Siege Tank is going to be on the way once he crosses that 150 mineral threshold. And there we go, landing the barracks and uh, just putting up a bunker is Thorzane so he doesn't get uh, broken by any sort of early aggression out of uh, MC. We can see MC following up with a robo and uh, second gateway. So take, slowing it down a little bit, play, taking it a little bit safer here on the fifth and final match. Yeah, you know, uh, if you really feel you're better than your opponent, uh, two or three Warp Gate Robo build to open against Terran is just about as safe as safe can be. It's like the captain safety build. You get that Observer, you have enough units to hold off anything they do early, and you can literally scout any all-in and stop it and not be in too, too bad a shape economically. I'm not sure after game number one and two if MC is confident that he actually is the better player over Thorazine, but last game showed a nice <laughs> uh, display of skill. Uh, you know, especially after that EMP completely destroying MC's entire army. And what's going on here? We've got a swap of the buildings yet again and going to attach on that starport. So this is uh, kind of like a spinning wheel going round and round. It is tasteless. I mean... Well, I just called you tasteless. That's like how oh you say it to him. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, what I wanted to point out here is, yeah, he shouldn't feel like he's better than Thorzane after those games. Like, maybe he is, maybe he isn't, but he shouldn't be like, oh, I'm way better than this kid. But I feel like MC and the way that he is, 
Uh, I bet you he really thinks he is. So we see him going for like the <laughs> uber safe build here. You know, he's like, no, I'm way better than this nub, no problem. So he's getting that nexus at a good timing, getting up to four warp gates to be able to hold anything, scouting everything he needs to scout. A raven is on the way though, and uh, that's that's pretty standard, man. I mean, the uh, a raven with marine siege tank is the way to do it. And he's going to be able to get rid of that Observer, and MC is going to have to counter this just right. Oh my god, he's making a Stargate. What's going on, Chill? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Where are we? He's got uh, the Stalkers warping in. Maybe, does he see that, uh, going ahead and looking at MC's vision, he sees the add-on for that Starport, so it's possible he wants to go for some sort of hard counter and start getting Phoenixes out. Actually, mm. this is a lot of tech. Going Robo, Phoenixes, as well as four Warp Gates, but he does have that expansion up. Uh, hasn't quite dropped assimilators yet, that is natural. Uh, Thor being made for Thorzane, and he's getting vehicle plating level 1. What? I, okay, hold on. I have to think for a minute. Alright, okay. this is, this is what I see happening. Um, he is actually going to go for an insane build. Um, yes! Oh my god, he's gonna go <laughs> Banshee Thor Marine. He has a single sea chank out because it takes a while to get all this stuff going. So he's like, hey, I'm going to use this production facility. But uh, this is actually kind of beautiful. That's why he's getting that uh, vehicle plating level one. That's going to make the Thor even more beastly. I mean, they already start with armor. You throw another armor on there with how many hit points they have, with how many SUVs can repair them. You're going to have a very hard time actually killing that. Obviously, these uh, Phoenixes aren't going to do that well against this build. This is such... A strange build that we're seeing, but really awesome too. So you think the Thor is going to act as uh, the meat shield, just soak up all the damage while the high DPS of the Banshees and Marines in the back able to uh, really bring the pain to MC? Yeah, I mean, uh, Thors with armor upgrades and SCVs repairing going to do excellently against Zealots. Then you get mm -hmm. that point defense drone via Raven, and suddenly after, you know, 30 seconds of engagement, the Zealots have evaporated and MC is going to be like, oh, crap. Now, MC does have this Observer in the main base of Thorzane, so he has seen the uh, the, the Thor production coming out of the, his main base. Now, dropping a second factory, and actually, if we think back to uh, Thorzane's previous round, he did something similar uh, to this, less the Banshees against uh, Liquid Tyler. He got plus two plating very quickly, and then pushed out with the Thors on Zalnega Caverns. Meanwhile, Thorzane is just spinning this wheel round and round as he's now switched into Viking production, uh, I guess he's happy with the uh, single Banshee. Yeah, uh, this is getting more and more interesting. And you know what? Uh, MC is doing a great job. Nice Phoenix harassment, by the way, in the main mineral line of Thorzane. Just picking a few off. Really great way to use those. And uh, the slowness of the Thors walking back in is shown as those Phoenixes get out without taking a single hit. And um, y you know what? This is it's it's such a cool build, but I'm sure that MC saw this against Tyler, like this kind of similar build. So he is mixing in some more immortals, uh, as we've seen. He does have an immortal out already. Is making a good number of units, getting the Zealot charge, getting that third base up. So I think he has learned from Tyler's mistakes. I'm sure he watched the VOD in preparation. So uh, we're gonna have to see if. I mean, these guys are kind of running around in a circle, countering each right. other's units right now. Right, and now Thorzane adding on Phase 3, where he swaps the starport for a reactor and builds another factory, and he's actually got a reactor on one of his other factories, pumping out Hellions, working on that Infernal Pre-Igniter. I'm going to imagine, just before he goes to attack, he's also going to add the Strike Cannon, which completely negates uh, any sort of Immortals, and actually does well against Colossi, if you can get up to them. Uh, the counter to this, at least in my experience, is getting a few high damage dealing units like the Colossi uh, in the back with the Thermal Lance, and then just a lot of stuff. So a lot of gateway units in the front to buffer the Thor damage. Yeah, quite agreed. I like to add in a uh, couple more Immortals as well. I mean, yeah, go ahead and use your Strike Cannon, but during some of that time I'm going to deal massive damage to your Thors. It's very scary to watch them get repaired. Um, Obviously, these speed zealots, they're going to be hit or miss, man. He's hes making blue flame hellions, yep. and Thors have that really high armor. So, I don't know, I'm getting a little bit scared for MC. He is adding a lot more warp gates, and we're going to have to see what units he chooses to actually make out of those. Is he going to go for more stalkers, which, which might be fearful with the point defense drones out? Or is he going to go for those zealots that may or may not disappear to the blue flame hellions? 
see the Phoenix is swooping around trying to get uh, as much scouting as possible with Thor's tagging one of them, taking them down. Thorzane actually knocking down his backdoor destructible rocks. We haven't seen too many players utilize this pathway, so he's going to break that down and take an expansion at the top left. MC has an observer parked there, so he should be well aware of this. MC, meanwhile, uh, transitioning into High Templar. So he's got his High Templar, or his Templar archives complete, trying to get Blink. I think the push from Thorzane is going to come pretty quick here. I think he's he's reached his amount of Thors. He's got a plus two just about to finish. So if MC tries to get size from him, it looks like he is chrono, chrono boosting it out. I'm not sure if he's going to have it done in time. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure of that either. I do uh, like him maybe getting out a high Templar though for feedback. If he can feedback that Raven right away, that's certainly going to help him out. And uh, MC walking across the map with his Stalkers, hitting this command center. And it looks like Thor's ain't going to go down there, try to trap them. Blink almost done, so he's going to want to get out of there. He does not want to fight that army with just that little group of Stalkers. Yeah, this is a scary army coming for Thorzane as he pushes forward, takes control of his command center, and actually taking a third base changes my mind about this build. I thought it was just going to be a two base timing. You know, he hits that ideal unit composition and then attacks forward, but indeed it's not as he takes uh, the easily, def uh, I'm using air quotes, easily defended three o'clock expansion. And he has broken the back door rocks, keep in mind. So he has access to the top left as he's pushing into the middle of the map here. Oh my god, this is very tense, chill, and this could happen at any moment. Uh, MC needs a pretty open place to do this, but he does have Psystorm. Bad Psystorms! What? Psystorms. Oh my god. I don't know what to say, man. He, I think he was trying to maybe hit the Vikings? Uh, wants to keep those alive, but... Uh, well, here we go. He has a lot of hallucinated immortals coming out. And we're gonna have to see if that does the trick. Here we go. This is going to be probably the deciding battle of the entire game. The Zealots just fueling out so many fake uh, Thors in there. I mean, so many fake, fake mortals. Oh my god, what is going on in Thorzane? Wow. Looks like he's gonna hold. It's hard to say because these are the same color as Stalkers. <laughs> but he does, in fact, clean up a ton of Thors left. Thors, oh my god. an amazing unit against the Protoss army. And suddenly MC is thinking to himself, how did I get here? I am losing to this guy I've probably never heard of who's going Thors against me. Yeah, and a lot of SCVs being brought to repair, and I'm surprised Thorzane didn't take the bait there using the strike cannon on the Colossi, not taking the bait and trying to take down the fake Immortals. Now marching forward with his buffer of Thors, and he's got the Blue Flame Hellions as well as he continues to push forward. MC pulling everything, trying to focus down these Thors, but they're surrounded by SCVs, and with the Blue Flame Hellions able to snipe out the probes, and uh, try able to take out the Zealots from the back. It looks like Thorzane has a good position as he sits on the high ground. Oh my god, an Archon actually morphing in. And Thorzane has broken the third base and taken down the economy of MC as he's crushing through. What does MC have left to do? Looking at his units on the field, not a whole lot. He may have been completely broken here by the Thor build yet again of Thorzane. Man, he is named Thorzane for a reason. These Thors with their plus two armor just do not die. MC, I'm sure in shock, he knows that he is pretty much dead unless Thorzane goes home and gives him 10 minutes, no rush. But here <laughs> he comes, that is not going to happen. And I think we're going to be seeing a GG just momentarily here. The Thor's walking, oh, he's trying to buy time, but there is no time left to buy. Who is this kid, man? He took out Fruit Dealer, Liquid Tyler, and now he's going to take out the two-time GSL champion, OGS MC. Forced to GG, Thor's ain't going into the round of four, and I have to give a fantastic round of applause to Thor's aim because he is so handsome. Oh my god, I'm using push to talk on my keyboard, so I'll give the one handed. <laughs> That's my clap for him. Slap my face a little bit. Um, I can't oh believe god. how good this kid is, chill. Holy crap, he just completely outplayed MC in a best of five. This was a best of five on good maps against. A person many people feel is the best player in the entire world, and Thorzane, like, tore him apart. Yeah, MC won two games, but I feel like in one of those, Thorzane, for a lot of the game, did outplay MC. And in the other one, Thorzane did the best he could after losing too many SCVs in a rush. So, wow! What? Who? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Artosis, do you know what this means? We're going to see in the semifinals of TSL number three, a TVT between Thorzane and Kaz, and that is going to be nuts.
Wow. Wow. That I mean, that is that is going to be so good. I do not know who to root for there. Two amazing Terrans. That means definitely a Terran in the finals of the TSL. Nice. Uh, a stark nice. contrast to the finals of TSL number two. Of course, it's a different game, but, you know. I'm with you. And uh, I just want to report in that the Thorzane fan club has 17 pages, and that should explode pretty soon. I'm going to get on there right after the cast. I want to go ahead, before we lose any viewers, to tell everyone that tomorrow Artosis is going to be back, joined by DJ Wheat to take you through the remaining matches for the round of eight. And that's going to be Naniwa versus Cruncher, a PvP, followed by Haswubs taking on the Emperor, Slayer's Boxer. You are not going to want to miss that tomorrow on Easter Sunday. Oh god, those are some really strong players in there. Can't wait to see Nanoa play once again and Slayer's Boxer against Hasuobs, the legend from Germany. You guys better watch or you're not my friends anymore. And I will definitely be watching it. Uh, I mean, that's uh, for the Artosis commentary. For the matches, I want to see what Cruncher can do. If he can keep the dream alive. Nanoa, a beast. The, like, the storylines are just writing themselves in my head, so... I don't want to keep everyone around for too much longer. Artosis, been a pleasure as always. I'm going to look forward to seeing you tomorrow when we solve the other side of the bracket for the TSL round of four semifinals. I'll, I'll leave the closing comments to you. Thank you everyone so much for watching the TSL. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Me and DJ Wee, some amazing matches. It's going to be a fun night. If you watch any matches this weekend, those have to be them. And I'm just going to leave it by telling everyone to go to the Copenhagen stream right now and watch the finals. It's MC versus Kaz. Everyone jump over to there and take a look at that stream.